In Australia, Alpine seemed stuck as fifth fastest team, and then Pierre Gasly suddenly drove at the level of Ferrari and Aston Martin. Even in the team, they were completely surprised by this sudden urge of power coming from the pink car, as Gasly had been in pace with Carlos Sainz for the entire race. Had the crash not happened, Gasly and Ocon would have both finished high in the points. However, when you look at it in more depth, things are beginning to clear out because Alpine has evidently made some huge upgrades to the car, which might put even more of the top teams on edge. What does this mean for the French squad? And could they compete this season? Four tenths forward, four tenths backward. This was Alpine's position on the track in the first two races, as the team was stuck in the fifth fastest car during the first two races. On the bright side, they are not in danger from behind, but they also cannot go forward. The Australian GP qualifiers just furthered this trend for the French. Gasly barely made it into Q3, and Ocon missed by a hair, with the former being almost a full second behind the pole sitter Max Verstappen, but not as far behind as Mercedes, Aston Martin, or Ferrari. So, everyone was surprised when Alpine's new driver was able to maintain the pace behind Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll in the race and only lose 8 seconds to Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso before the second red flag. What's interesting is that even Alpine themselves were surprised by this improvement of the form, which happened literally overnight. After the race, team principal Otmar Zafnar was unable to explain why the car was drastically faster. But this unexpected result encouraged the development department at Enstone as the steps will be taken until the summer have already been approved in the wind tunnel. According to the data, this improvement promises an increase of six tenths over two stages. The first major upgrades are announced for Baku and Imola, and after that for Montreal and Silverstone with smaller modifications in between. You have to investigate that because the car hasn't changed much compared to the last race, he said. Maybe we got the setup perfect or made progress with energy management. We proceed as we did last year. If we can expect progress from a new part, it depends on the car, said Zafnauer. If everything goes according to plan, the Alpine A523 should be three tenths faster at Imola, which, if it becomes reality, will more or less close the gap to Red Bull's direct pursuers Aston Martin, Ferrari, and Mercedes. Whether that brings the French drivers closer to the top depends on the pace of development of the others. Zafnauer says that this is a game of dependencies, but he thinks they can keep up with the development pace of Ferrari, Mercedes, and AM. The crash of Ocon and Gasly in Australia burdened the team and endangered the supply of material. Zafnauer mentioned that the crash, while expensive for the team, was not a problem for the cost cap. However, he noted that the accident has caused a shift in priorities as the team now needs to focus on obtaining spare parts for the upcoming race in Baku. He explains that certain parts, such as the front wing, cannot easily be rebuilt in two weeks, so obtaining spare parts is critical for the team's success. So, it remains to be seen whether this will have an impact on the team's ability to complete their development package. Zafnar did not want to make a big deal out of the accident, saying that both drivers apologized and it showed him that they both felt guilty, which is why they only treated it as a race accident and have since moved on. He also defended the drivers, saying there was really no one to blame. It's a shame that they came together. As far as trying to blame one or the other, I don't think that's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to learn from it. There's so much chaos there, and you've got to make quick decisions. If you look at the onboard and the replay, Sonoda gets through. Esteban tries to follow him. You don't know what Pierre's going to do, and Pierre's just trying to get back to the racing line. It's not like he's looking in the mirrors and seeing somebody and saying, oh, I'm going to block him. He's looking the other way, getting on the racing line thinking no one is there. If anyone could have avoided the accident, it was Ocon, as he could have seen Gasly and could have slowed down in time. But for Ocon, who was only 10th before he retired, the restart offered a golden opportunity to make up many places, and he was on the right track in the first two corners. And there, Gasly stretched right in the middle, as he had to avoid Carlos Sainz, and proceeded to fly off on the grass, losing momentum. There was great frustration that he was no longer in that beautiful fifth place. Unlike many drivers on the grid, Zafnauer commented on the FIA Entertainment Show with the red flags and restarts, saying he thought the rules were followed correctly while urging the FIA to stick to one set of rules and follow them all the time. Interestingly, had the race not continued after the third red flag, the Alpine drivers would have fared much better points-wise in the race that ended in disaster for the team. Talking about the long break there is in F1 now, with the next race in Baku not coming for another few weeks, 
The Alpine team principal said that could be the way forward. He discussed the benefits of having an unplanned break in the Formula One calendar, which typically features 23 races with many back-to-backs and triple headers. He noted that despite not being originally planned, the current three-week break, along with a similar break in August, is beneficial for the teams. Zafnauer suggests that gaining knowledge from this unplanned break might be useful for future planning and that incorporating similar breaks into the calendar by design could be a way forward. He emphasized that having a break helps teams prepare for the upcoming races and that this approach might be beneficial for all involved in the sport. Esteban Ocon is adamant in his opinion that if Alpine can't replicate what Aston Martin did, then there really is no point in racing. We have to, in our mind, think it is possible. Otherwise, there's no point racing," Ocon said when asked if Alpine can replicate Aston Martin's progress. If you think about it, we finished the season in December, and when we restarted, it was end of February, beginning of March. So it's about three, four months. I don't know if Aston would have been able to do so in season, but if you take three or four months, it's not the end of the season. Aston Martin has shown, and fair play to them, that it is possible to make a big step if you find the right things, so it is doable. Okana has been buoyed by Alpine's development plans, with the Instone team bringing a substantial update to the next race in Baku at the end of April. He further mentioned that he spends at least one or two days a week at the factory and has had the opportunity to visit the aero department. During these visits, he had been shown future drawings and concepts for the car, and he expressed excitement about the team's plan. Ocon mentions that there are some really interesting ideas and he is looking forward to seeing them produced and added to the car, as his involvement and interest in the team's development progress suggest a strong commitment to his team's success and a desire to be as informed as possible about the technical aspects of the sport. While the A523 car does not have any major weaknesses, there are many small details that the team is working on to improve the car's performance, even though improving these small details can be difficult as making changes in one area can have unintended consequences in another. Alpine cannot afford to make any compromises, as they are currently working hard to move up the grid and cannot afford to lose any performance. Alpine's reliability hasn't been a concern across the opening three rounds of 2023 like it was for the majority of last season. But once again, a plethora of factors have prevented Alpine from exploiting the full potential of its package. And with McLaren set to debut its extensive upgrade package at the next round in Azerbaijan, Alpine could end up ruining its chances of establishing a more comfortable grasp over fourth place. What are your thoughts on this matter? Can Alpine really deliver on these words and compete with Ferrari, Mercedes, and even Aston Martin? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, and see you next time.